Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day's going well. I am in uh, Topaz Studio 2 today. Um, I did a first look video review, which you can find, yeah, that corner. I always forget that. Um, I gotta remember my left side, I guess. Um, I think that's right. I'll find out when I edit the video. Um, but I am, um, I'm playing around in Topaz Studio, and one of the things that's really great about Topaz is that they have really powerful masking capabilities. And uh, I thought what I would do is walk through an edit of a photo using Studio 2, show off a few of the filters, and then do, do a little bit of brush masking as well. So while there's a number of uh, masking options in Topaz Studio, I'm just gonna cover brush masking in this video, but let's hop into it. Okay, this is the, um, the new interface. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start with a basic adjustment filter. And I, I do have to look at my notes to see what I did. I bumped up the exposure just a tiny bit. Um, just a landscape that was like at sunset. The sun was kind of coming through over there a little bit, but it doesn't really look like it, but we're gonna change that. Um, I also increased the shadows a tad, so something about like that. And I think I took the highlights down. I did, I took the highlights down. And so, you know, as the uh, the name of this filter implies, I'm making basic adjustments. So basically, um, changing the light a little bit, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of saturation because I like my colors. So I'm gonna bump that up about 45 or something. So there we go. And the temperature, I'm gonna bump up, I'm gonna warm that a tad. Um, so there you go. So that's my basic adjustment. Now I'm done with that filter, and I'm gonna just click that. And as I talked about in that first look video, each of uh, each time you add a filter, it's basically a new layer. Um, so there's now a layer that's called basic adjustment, and I can show you the impact I've had on the photo. There's the original, and there's the current. So we got a ways to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another filter. This one is gonna be precision contrast. And if I recall correctly, precision contrast was a pro filter in Studio One, which means you had to buy it separately. In Studio Two, you just pay the one price, uh, which is $99.99. And it's on special right now for $20 off. I'll put a link down below, which is an affiliate link. And uh, that helps me out. Your price is the same, but I get a small commission if you use that. By the way, there's also a coupon code, GYMNIX, that'll save you an extra 15%, I believe. So anyway, my point is just that in the new Studio Two, their new model is one price and you get every filter. So that's wonderful. You don't have to go through and say, well, I want this one, but I'm not sure about that and blah, blah, blah. You just get everything for one price. Um, it's awesome. So I'm gonna go in here and on the uh, contrast, which I love uh, all these contrast options, um, I'm gonna use basically all of them. So there's micro contrast. I'm gonna bump up low as well. Something about like that. I'm gonna bump up medium. And let's see, I'm also gonna bump up uh, large or high. So let's see, something about like that. And that's all I did on precision contrast. So if you ever wanna look at your filters and compare the before and after, you can just click on this eyeball. There's before and there's after. Just gave it some nice contrast, which again, kind of change, you know, it accentuates the difference in light between the darker and the lighter areas. So again, kind of flatter looking photo and now much more contrasty, which gives it a little bit more drama, which um, I like. So uh, add filter. I'm gonna go get a filter called Bloom. Um, this is a kind of a fun filter. And what it does, it kind of pops the brighter areas. It kind of gives them a little bit of glow. So it might work on lights in a street scene, like in a cityscape, maybe at blue hour or something. But in this case, I'm gonna use it to kind of accentuate the glow of the sunset light that's over here on the very left side of the frame. So I'm gonna take strength up to about 40 or so. Whoa. Um, something about like that. And I'm gonna move threshold a tiny bit. Let's call it like that. And then bloom size, I'm gonna increase as well. So that's just, you know, how far does it kind of bleed into the photo? So something about like that. So let me close that filter. Now let me show you the before and after. That's the current state. Here's the before, as you can see, um, it was the, the brightness and intensity of that sunlight was really fairly well contained just to that thin strip. And now with bloom on, it's kind of emanating a little further into the photos. So that's kind of what it does. It gives a little bit of pop to that light. And I like the filter, I think it's kind of cool. Um, now I'm gonna use dual tone. So dual tone is also known uh, as split toning um, in other products. So it basically, you can take a color for the highlights 
and a color for the shadows separately and make adjustments to it. I'm just gonna use highlights because this is where I'm also working on um, that area of sunlight where I just adjusted with the bloom filter. I'm now gonna go in here and I'm gonna say, all right, highlights. I'm gonna go up here. Um, I'm gonna do something like 60 or so. And the hue is gonna be uh, 14. So there you go. Now, let me show you what that did. Let me turn off this filter. If you look at the sky and a little bit of the reflection and primarily around where the sunlight is, what I did is I just took that and I accentuated that. But here's the thing, and this is where masking comes in, and this is kind of the point of the video, is I, I like it in around that, that section, that thin strip of sunlight, and I like it kind of in the water where it's been reflected. I don't like it so much over here, so I'm just gonna mask it out. So you click on that little flag, um, I don't know if you saw that, there's a little icon. It, it, you can see it on any one of these filters, right? It looks kind of like a Japanese flag. It's a white rectangle with a little dot in the center. So you click on that and it brings up your masking menu and that's right here. Now you have a, several different options for masking. Again, I'm just talking about brush masking here. But as you can see, as you hover over it, it says select with content aware brush. The beauty of a content aware brush is it kind of figures out what's going on and there's an edge aware component so it knows what the edges are. So um, that's gonna come in handy in a, uh, uh, the next filter that I mask. But for this one, um, I'm just gonna mask some of the effect of that uh, dual tone out of the sky. So how do you do that? You'll notice that this little rectangle here, this is where you view your mask or the mask view, whatever you wanna call it, everything's white. So the easy thing to remember with masking is black conceals and white reveals. So that means a, a black mask means you're concealing or hiding whatever effect you have. And a white mask means you're revealing or showing whatever effect that you've applied. So in this case, I've applied dual tone and everything right now is showing. It's all white. So the entire mask is white. And what I want to do is hide some of that. So I've got my brush and I've got, um, if you come over here, you can kind of see that there's the brush. Um, I can use the right bracket key to increase the size of it, which I just did. Um, that's on a Mac. I assume it's the same on Windows. Um, you've also got radius here, which is the same thing. I can just increase or decrease the size of the brush with that radius slider. And then softness, if you look at the brush, you'll notice the green outer circle and the red inner circle. As I reduce the softness, those two, those two circles become almost concentric. Um, I usually use uh, leave softness right about in the middle, actually. Um, all that does is it creates kind of a gradient zone. I'll put it over here, maybe easier to see with a darker background. That zone between the red circle, which is a solid line, and the outer circle, which is a green dotted line, is kind of the gradient zone. So more softness means a, a bigger difference or a bigger gradient zone. All that means is the effect is gonna sort of be a gradient through that area, which means it's gonna be full effect in the center where that red circle is, and between the red and green, it's gonna to start to dissipate or disappear. Um, hope that helps and makes sense. Now, I've got my brush. All I wanna do is I'm masking out, remember, because everything is white, it's all being revealed. I'm now masking out, so all I wanna do is get rid of some of the effect of that yellow light in these clouds, because I just don't like it up there. So. I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna paint over this and do something about like that. And there you go. And maybe I'll come over here and hit a little bit in that part of the sky as well. And there you go, that was really it. Um, as you can see, my mask view over here, I missed some spots, so I should come over here and clean that up and it looks like I missed a spot in here. And there you go. Um, that's my, my mask has now been applied, which means I've taken away or removed or concealed um, the effect of dual tone in that sky. So it mostly just applies over here. Now, I got a little bit of an edge here. I probably wanna smooth out a little bit. Um, and, and there you go. And that's really brush masking uh, in a sense, right? So the before and the after, you can see now the effect um, of dual tone because I've masked it out and part of the sky is really just applying there and some of the reflection in the water. There's the after. So that's how you brush mask. Now I'm gonna get a couple, of, I gotta look at my notes here. I got a couple of other filters. I'm gonna go and get the HSL filter, 
which is, uh, here it is, HSL color tuning. This allows you to take individual colors and make adjustments to them across the photo. There's also a really neat feature here. I'll, I'll show blue because that's the easiest. If you hover over the blue, you'll see that it gives you these, um, uh, these red lines over all the areas that are impacted by blue. So that gives you a good visual cue that says, oh, you know what, if I change blue, whether it's a hue, the saturation, or the lightness, which are the three sliders here you can use for blue, um, that's the areas it's gonna be impacted. Now, I'm gonna go to orange. There's a little bit of orange here, and all I'm gonna do is bump up that saturation a little bit, so I'm just trying to pop that color um, of orange in that sky. And I'm gonna do the same thing with yellow. I'm gonna pop that saturation a little bit. Again, all I'm doing is increasing the saturation of the orange and yellow, which is really just over there. So this is a way to help me pop that color in the sky, because I'm trying to bring up the impact of that fading light in the photo, because it's if you look at the original, it's kind of lost, right? Um, and so what we've been doing is bloom to accentuate the brightness of it, dual tone to pop a little bit of that color, and now HSL color tuning to add a little bit more refinement. And as you can see from the original to now, we're starting to get a little bit more of that color in the photo. Now to show you how uh, HSL color tuning works, the blue hue, you can change hues. And so as I do that, you'll see that the blue is changing, right? Now, I don't wanna do any of that. There's also a saturation, so if you wanted to bump up more blue, and get really saturated, you can do that, or desaturated, you can do that. Again, not something I'm gonna do in this photo, although I kinda of like a little bit of that blue saturation. Looks kinda of good, maybe I'll give it a little bit, I like my color. Um, and lightness, which is the luminance or exposure value of that color. So as I drag it to the right, the blue gets lighter, that looks kinda of good. Um, and if I drag it to the left, blue gets darker, also looks pretty good. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is, but I just wanted to point that out. That's how HSL color tuning works. It's a great way to fine tune individual colors in an image. Okay, masking one more time. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna get the smudge filter and we're gonna do one more masking job. So smudge is, it's basically an art filter. There's a lot of art options built into Topaz Studio. Smudge is one, I'm just gonna go to 100, and you'll see it just basically does this weird kind of flowy, smoothing kind of artistic look to it. Now, I don't recommend using that at 100 on a photo necessarily, but if you look at the sky and the water, it does give you a little bit of a feel of a longer exposure. It kind of smooths out some of the clouds and the water. And while um, this photo doesn't look good at, a, at 100, I'm gonna leave it at 100 just for the masking and then we'll make an adjustment. So once again, click on that little masking icon, white reveals, black conceals. I'm gonna grab my brush and I'm just gonna go conceal it from these, these areas here. So the beauty of Topaz, as I said, is it has an edge aware brush. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm not gonna do a super great job but I'm just kind of um, swiping it over this mountain. Um, and there you go, I've just removed that smudge adjustment from the land. Now, it's also applying in the grass. Well, it applied to the entire photo, of course. I think I missed a spot here. You can kind of tell on the mask. Um, so it looks actually kind of cool on the grass. It almost looks like the grass is blowing in the wind. But for this photo, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna come along this edge, take that, um, that adjustment out. Again, I'm concealing, because I'm changing it from white to black, and I'm back to my normal grass. Uh, and so what I've done basically is just taken the smudge filter and applied it to the sky and the water to give it a little bit of a smoothing effect, a little bit of a blur. Now I can go back in here and say, okay, at 100, it's probably a little too much. Maybe it looks a little bit better around 50. Uh, if you wanna look at the before, and the after, and if I zoom in, I can do that here. Let me show you the uh, before and after. So there's before, you can see a little bit more detail in the water and in the clouds. And in the after, clouds are smoothy, kind of swirly, and so is the water. Again, probably not a perfect implementation. Mostly I wanted to demonstrate how the masking works. I actually think I would take smudge down a little bit more. Uh, but it's a great way to create a little bit of a smoothing effect in a photo. And in combination with brush masking here, I was able to apply it just to the sky and the water and leave the land. 
uh, in the middle of the photo, which is this mountain range here, uh, and the grass in the foreground alone. So it softens it up, gives it a little bit more of artistic feel. And let me show you the original. That's what the photo started as. Kind of boring, missing a lot of color pop, missing contrast and things like that. And the after, got a nicer color pop and uh, some smoothing and some fun and also brightened up that section over there where the sunlight is kind of peeking through the clouds to give it a little bit more of kick. And that's it. I just kind of wanted to jump into brush masking and also show off a couple of filters. That's how you use it and do it in Topaz Studio 2. So hope it helps. Thanks for watching, my friends. That's it for now. I'm signing off, so thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about this. Like, share, subscribe, and don't hesitate to give, uh, give me a comment. Share your feedback, and I'll be doing more filter, uh, excuse me, more videos with filters and masking and things like that in Topaz. There's also other masking options, as you saw. I'll get into those in future videos. Thanks for watching, my friends. Have a great day. Take care, and adios.